Okay, so I want to do a pretty quick video going over actual code for the linked list. Um, I did a previous video that you can find uh, up there in the card. I'll probably have it linked up there for actual slides I went over, kind of going over a higher level scope of what linked lists are and what we really kind of want to use them for, what they can be used for. And a lot of that's just kind of having a really extendable abstract data structure that we can do whatever we want with and honestly that's kind of the beauty of Linklist is there's no real true one application for it it's just kind of whatever we want to use it for and they're a little bit more dynamic and versatile than something like an array uh, they, they really kind of approach a similar use case of vectors but you don't always have vectors so if you don't ever have a time where you don't have a vector then using a linked list is a really good alternative. And I know this is C++, but if you ever use C, creating your own linked list with, say, uh, structs and stuff like that in C is a generally pretty good approach. Now, I'll go ahead and swap over to VS Codium with my code, and we'll start in a similar approach to how I handled the slides video. So we'll start with our simple node class. Now. Again, I kind of went over uh, various classes in the previous video as well, but we have our parent once, and this is just some C preprocessor stuff. It just makes sure that this isn't included all at one time, not really that big of a deal. But our main point here is that we have some public data, and there's no private data because this is something that needs to be used by other classes, so it's going to be pretty much all public data. And this, it's a very simple linked list. So our nodes are going to be very, very simplistic. There's not going a whole lot going on here. We just have a simple integer of data, and then we have a next pointer. This indicates that we have a singly linked list. If we had, say, a node with previous in it, then we have a doubly linked list because we're going to be pointing to the next data, the data, well, the data that comes after it, and then the data that comes before it. So. You have multi-directional linked lists as long as it's linear. Um, if it goes anything else, well, you've created a non-linear data structure and, well, you can name it something else. But for this, we just have a singly linked list. You, know, you can look up here at the name, you can see singly linked. But we have two constructors. We have our default constructor here, which is just going to be null data for zero, just empty integer and then our next is going to point to a null pointer. But the more useful one is going to be a constructor that takes in an integer which will populate this object's integer data. So we're going to populate the actual data and then we still have our next to null pointer and we set the actual pointer in our class for the linked list so whenever we initialize them we can have them set to something if you have a reason to do that you can do that for our purpose we're just going to keep it simple and have them point to nothing and we'll adjust them in our functions where we need to right so that's the basic node here and now we'll move to our actual linked list header file give me a requirement once for CP processor and then we include our node so now we have access to that class and then we have our actual class. So we're not going to be using the actual node stuff in this header file. Since we're including it in this header file, that means we'll have access to it in our linked list.cpp for later. So for now, we have three private variables. We have a pointer for head, well, a node pointer for head. Same thing for tail, so this is going to have a start and a end defined by the class. And then we also have a integer for length. And this is going to be the number of elements. So the number of actual nodes in our linked list. We're going to keep track of that as we add things in and remove things. And it's really helpful later on, or if you just want to keep track of it. Uh, I know arrays and vectors have aspects of that so we're gonna implement that in this linked list too. I made some public functions here including our constructor it's gonna have 
uh, default for having the head and the tail set to null. So they're going to start empty, and then we're going to have length of zero because there are no elements in it. We have our deconstructor, and then we have uh, several void functions. I'm not actually returning any data from any of my functions right now. Excuse me. Uh, we have insert at the start, insert at the end. Both of those are going to take in simple integers. It's just the data that we're adding to the list. And then we have a more specific one of insert at, and that's going to take in two integers, one for index. So that's going to be the index in the list that we want to insert the data at, and then the data itself. After that, we have two void functions that have no inputs for remove start, remove end. Those are going to remove data from the start and end. And then we have remove at, which just takes in a single integer for the index that we want to remove. And after that, we finally have more of an interface method, and that's going to be a simple display. And then I'll probably add a new one, <coughs> maybe a search or something, maybe a find instances of, because that is one of the things that we're going to do with linked list is kind of extend its functionality by adding our own new functions and kind of defining what those are. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at our CPP. So obviously we include linklist.h. The linklist.h includes node.h. So in this CPP, we have access to both our linklist header and our node header. So anything in those files we have access to in this file. So we start with our deconstructor and this basically just it's going to clear out all the memory everything that our linked list is using when it goes out of scope or we call it so if we want to delete the linked list we can just call it deconstructor or whenever we close out the program or exit the program or something like that where it goes out of scope it's going to call all of this and it's going to clear our data therefore we don't have any memory leaks so Initialize a node set at the head, so we're going to have a node start at the head, and we're going to continuously loop as long as our node is not equal to a null pointer, which basically means as long as we're inside of the linked list and it has data in it, then we're going to call this code, which is going to set our head to the next head, delete that node, which is our current head, so it's going to basically initialize several elements in the linked list, and as our head is here we're going to continue on to the next node and delete the original and then continue that process until eventually we're left with nothing but null pointers and then once we are we're going to set the tail to a null pointer and we end up clearing out all the data our header and tail are going to be null pointers and we kind of have it back to where it was to begin with and then once it goes out of scope that class will also be deleted and then we should be good. Now moving on we have insert start so the most simple way to include data for a linked list is just taking an integer we create a brand new node that takes in that data so maybe if I did insert start 5 it's going to create a node with a data attribute of 5 <coughs> and then we are going to increase our linked list, well, length. So it's going to say, hey, you add an element, so the length will now go to one. If we add another one, it goes to two, three, four, so on and so forth. And then we're going to check if the list is empty. If it is empty, then we are simply going to set our head and tail equal to our new node, and then we're going to return from the function. Because that's all we're going to do. Now, if it's not empty, then we are going to set our nodes, our current nodes, next pointer to the head, and then we're going to set our head equal to our new node. So essentially, I'm just going to come down here. So if we had, say, a linked list that had, say, 45 pointing to 56 pointing to null, then, <coughs> excuse me. What we have is we have our header file, or not header file, I'm sorry, our head node is here. But we're inserting a new node of maybe say 34. Well, this node next equals head, 
we want the new node that we have, maybe say 34, we want it to point to our head, which is 45. And then we want to adjust the head equal to our new node. So now 34 is our new head. Uh, we don't do anything with the tail, so all that stays the same. So now we've inserted something at the very beginning, adjusted our head, we're good to go. Okay. So then we have insert end, which is very similar. Same thing, we take in some data, create a node off of it, increase the length. Again, check if it's empty. If it is, we just adjust the head and the tail. If it's not, then we have tail next. So again, the same thing. Maybe we had 34s pointing to, 56 is pointing to null. 56 is our tail. We want tail next and now point to our new node. Maybe we're inserting, uh, I don't know, 64. So now we're pointing to 64, which is our new node. Our new node by default always points to a null pointer. And then we adjust our tail to our new node. And that'd be kind of how that works. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, we have uh, probably maybe tied for the most complicated function here is going insert at. And this is inserting something at a very specific index. There is a pre-processing pre step that we need to go over, but it's the actual insertion and handling of that insertion that is the complicated part. The pre-processing is actually pretty easy, in my opinion at least. So we have two variables being passed in. We have an index and an actual data attribute. So maybe we want to insert at index one with data of five. The first thing we want to do is check if the index is being passed in by the user exist in the bounds of our linked list. So we have a two-part if statement here of index is greater than length or index is less than zero. If either of these is true, that means that the index is out of bounds and it really can't be done. So we're just gonna tell the user, hey, index is out of bounds and then we're gonna return. So we're not gonna do anything. Meanwhile, if our index is at the start, so if index equals equals zero, then we're just gonna call insert start. We've already have a function that does that. So we're just gonna call that and let it do its thing. And then same thing for length. If our index being passed in is the last element, then we're just gonna insert end. We already wrote that function. Should be good to go. But if it is in the middle, then we need to handle it differently. So same thing to a degree, we're gonna create a new node with our data. We're going to increase the length, but then we're going to create an instance of a node that is set to the head called current. And this is how we're gonna keep track of that. So we're gonna loop index minus one times. So we have a for loop that's gonna do i less than index minus one and then we're going to have current set to current next and basically if we have something at the head is going to check that then it's going to set it to its next pointer so the next element in the list and the next element in the list and so on and so forth until we get to index minus one so that's going to be the basically place right before the index I care about that because we have next pointers so we're going to do minus one because it's, we have knowledge of what comes after our current data, but nothing to really do before. So we're going to take advantage of that and just do index minus one. So here we initialize a temporary node set to the node after our loop. That is going to be the place that we're actually inserting at. And then set our current node to point to our new node and then set our new node to point to our temp node. So let's see if we can recreate that real quick down here in some text <coughs> excuse me so let's say we have 27 pointing to 34 pointing to 45 pointing to 56 pointing to no okay so we have just a little bit of text here and these are our different elements with our pointers this is our linked list 
pretty well defined. There's four elements in it, but let's say we want to, for starters, if we insert at zero, then it's going to check, it's going to find, hey, you want to insert at the very beginning, and we're inserting 18, and it's just going to do what we did earlier, and call insert at start. So now we have 18, 27, 34, 45, 56, so on and so forth. But now let's say we want to insert at element mm, two. So this would be element zero, this is element one, and this is element two. So we want to insert something between 27 and 34. So what's gonna happen is, obviously we're gonna create, I don't know, let's insert uh, 29. So we're gonna create a node of 29 in new memory. We are going to create an instance of a node to keep track of it, starting at the head, which is 18, and then we're gonna loop. We're gonna loop index minus one time, so currently head is, well, currently current is set to the head. So that's 18, and then we're gonna loop again. We're going to go index two, so we're gonna go two minus one. So here we have 18, then we have 27, and that is zero and one, and we cut out. So this is where we are currently pointing, that 27 is where current, currently stored is. Now, what we do here is we set a temporary node here at 34. Now, current is still at 27, right? But we want its next data to be pointed to our new node of 29. The 29 isn't currently pointing at 34 because it's only, it kind of we kind of broke this actually. 27 was pointing at 34, but now we're saying right here to point that at 29. And then we come here and say that our current new node, which is our 29, it's next needs to be pointed at temp, which if you recall, was what current next was, which is our 34. So now that fills in the gap, and now we've properly inserted an element at index two. So that's kind of how that works, and you have to really make sure you keep these links alive and stable, essentially. So it can be really easy to maybe mix these up in order, maybe forget one, it's not out of the question to say that that would probably happen. So that's basically the way that that works. And that's about as, well, obviously it can get more complicated than that, depending on what your situation is. But that is one of the more complicated aspects. Obviously dealing with doubly linked list, that is going to be more difficult because you're dealing with previous and next pointers. So that can get very tricky very fast. But we're just doing a single link list right now, so it's okay. And now we're going to do for removing data. So first thing that you do on any instance of removing data is that you need to make sure that the list is not empty because the moment you try and delete data for something that doesn't exist, you're going to have a really, really bad time. So in this case, if head equals equals null pointer, the only time that that is ever true is that there are no elements in the list. So if that is true, then we're just gonna say, hey, there's no data to delete, and we're gonna return. If we're not gonna break anything, everything should be just fine. But if this isn't true, we're gonna continue on. First thing we do, we are removing data, therefore we're going to reduce the length by one. So we do length minus minus, and after that, we don't need to initialize any new data because we're just removing old data. So we just set a node to our head, which is what we want to remove. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's say we have 26 pointing to 48. Very simple. And we have our head is 26. We are going to initialize some pointer pointing at 26. Now, first thing we do is just our head to what it points to. So, if 26 are ahead, we are now going to say that 48 is our new head. All right, and then the moment we do that, we are just going to delete this node. So now the only element in 
our linked list is 48. It is now properly the head. It is also the tail by proxy because that's what it was originally. We didn't change that. We just changed it and said, hey, this is our new head. We're going to delete the original data. And now we just have 48 point and null. And it's the only element in our linked list. And we freed up the memory and we should be good to go. Okay. So here we have remove end. So this is kind of opposite where we're just going to remove it at the end. It's a little bit more difficult, but that's only because it is a singly linked list. If we had doubly linked, then it might be a little bit easier here to adjust. But for now, let's just go ahead and get into this. First thing we do, make sure it's not empty. Adjust your length. And now we need to create a node to keep track of our location. Again, we're just going to use current here. And it's going to be a current tracker. So now what we do is if head next equals equals null pointer, as if though it is basically the only element in the linked list, we are going to set the head and the tail to null pointers, and we're going to delete current. It's going to be the data at that. So basically what we're doing is nulling out head and tail, deleting the data, and now there are no elements in the linked list. And we we'll return. But if that's not it, and we have a longer linked list, then we need to do some alterations. So let's maybe say that we have 35 pointing to 57. And then we'll point that to 98. Now, what we do here is a little bit convoluted. Um, and then this obviously would point to no. Okay. So what we have, remember that we have current is set to head, so our current is currently at 35 which is the head, we're going to loop through until our data, the data after the data we're pointing to is not a null pointer. So once it is a null pointer, then that's where we're going to break out. And that will get explained in just one second. But basically, we have 35. Its next is 57. That constitutes that. But its next is 98. That's not a null pointer. So we're just going to set current equal to current next. So now our current is 57. And its next two is a null pointer. So now this is the point that we care about, 57. So the first thing that we do is just delete current next. So that's deleted. So 57 is looking at this it might look like 57 is actually pointing to null it kind of is in a way but it's going to be a little bit safer if we just go ahead and say hey make sure current next is pointing to a null pointer because it could be pointing to some garbage data so for safety's sake we're going to say hey current needs to point to null it should be good and then we want to set tail to our current so 35 is now the head 57 is now the tail. Last thing we're pointing to is a null pointer. Should be good to go. All right. Now, again, I don't know if inserting at or removing at is the most complicated part here. But we're going to do remove at, and we'll see. But first things first, we're going to do that pre processing. So since we're deleting, we need to make sure that the list is not empty. So handle that then handle if it's out of bounds for your index, then if it's removing at the start for index zero, call remove start. If it's removing at the end for index length, remove end, and then we can actually do the unique code here. So first things first, like we have everything else, length minus minus, and then we're gonna have a current node set at our head to keep track of things. And then we're gonna do very similar of index minus one to kind of track until we get to that index and then we're going to loop for our current. So this is very, very similar to everything we've done previously. So let's just go ahead and do 22 pointing to 45 pointing to 78 pointing to 100. Okay. So 22, let's say uh, we want to remove index three. So we're going to remove the 78. 
Now, obviously our current is 22 because it's the head. And we're just gonna keep looping through index minus one. If we're removing three, that means we need to loop two times. So current is 22, then 45, that's one. And then finally 78, that is two. Now, I ended it wrong. Oh, sorry, that's a three. Uh, the third index is going to be starting counting at zero. Um, we're doing two, two minus one. I'm so sorry, because this is index zero, this is index one, this is index two, index three. Uh, mental lapse right there, I'm so sorry. But, okay, index two, which is gonna be deleting 78, so we're gonna loop onto one. So 22, then 45, and then we're done. Okay, so very similar to what we previously did, we're gonna create a temporary variable that is going to be current next. So 78 is our temp, 45 is our current. So, what we're pointing to, current next is now going to be current next next. So essentially 45 is next right now is 78. We want to change that to be 100. So essentially 45 is now going to point to 100. You want to say, well what happens to this 78? And if you recall, temp is current next which is 78 and we're deleting that so we just do that and we handled 45 point to 100 this line right here and 100 already points to null so we're good there so this is deleting at a specific index so everything should be good to go right there now the more I guess a static one here is just going to be display list and what happens here is you've seen this pretty frequently we're going to have a node keeping track starting at head and then we're going to loop until null pointer so this is going to loop on through every single element in the linked list and then we're going to simply see out this formatted data which is going to be the actual data at our current node and then we're going to set current equal to next which indicates that we go from one element to the next. So if we have, say, uh, 12 pointing to 36, pointing to 77, pointing to null, what happens here is currently our current node is set to head, which is 12, and then we're gonna start printing. So we'll have 12. Um, we have an arrow here. Um, one sec. I have spaces. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the formatting right. <clears throat> Make sure it's consistent. And then that is going to update current next. So now we're going to print out the same thing, but for 36. Whoops. And then we're going to do current next, which now that is 77. So same thing. 77 and current next which is a null well current's not going to null so we're not going to print out anything here we're simply going to print a new line character so I guess technically it would be like this but it'd be just a enter like that so this is essentially what the output of our linked list would be so 12 to a 36 to a 77 and then that's it so if we wanted to do more with this it's not too hard. I'll go ahead and save this to make sure it doesn't alter anything. But let's go ahead and try to make. <coughs> well, you know, before we try to make a new function, let's make sure it runs. So we have a main CPP where we're going to do a few things. So we create a linked list of A, and then we have insert start one, insert start two, insert n five, insert start zero insert at 37 remove at 3 and then we want to display the list so real quick um, <laughs> I am going to compile and then I will simply run and we can see that I have 0 2 1 5 so at the beginning we insert 
Let's see if we can keep track of this. What happens? We insert one. So this is a start. One point to null. And we insert start two. So now two is point one. And then we insert it end, which is going to be this is now point five. Five is now point null. Insert start zero. Zero is now pointing to two. And we insert it three, seven. So we want the third index to be seven. That's going to be zero, one, two, and then three. And then we remove it three. So that's going to be zero, one, two, three. So just remove the seven we just added. Not a big deal. And it was zero, two, one, five. If we look at what we get out, zero, two, one, five. So if we wanted to instead do remove at nothing, we just remove end and then remove move at say one. Like so then I think the alteration here is going to be that seven should still be here. We change to remove it in, so this five should go away. And then remove it one, so this two should go away. I think we should get zero, one, seven. Uh, let's see if we do. Okay. Save and recompile. And we end up with zero, one, seven, just like that. Okay. So that's kind of like the general gist of how link lists work and I, I think decent in-depth dive at the individual functions and kind of how to alter the main function here to do something with it. Now obviously this is very, very minimalistic. It's just creating a linked list object here and then adjusting the data. Obviously you wouldn't do this as your actual use case for it. You'd actually have something more applied for it. but in terms of interfacing with it, this is kind of how it works. So let's do a real quick sample real quick. What if, what if we make a new function um, int count, well, let's just do instance. Oh, I can't spell. Instance of. Yeah, let's do instance of. And then let's do int um, data. Well, actually, instead of do that, let's just do int val. So I'm going to create a instance of function. It's going to count the instance of a value that we want to determine. So let's go here. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to do my traditional separator <clears throat> and int linked list instance of int val. And what I want to do is actually very lazily basically copy my display because all I want to do is loop through my linked list and keep track of the number of times I come across this value. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> increment counter for every instance. I uh, know that's not descript at all, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set int count equals zero. And basically, if, uh, let's say, current data equals equals val, then what I want to do real quick is count plus plus 
this. And yes, I know I can do this without the curly braces and whatnot. I'm just doing this to keep things consistent and just aligned. And every single time I want to just increment, well, not increment, but just go the next current. So I think this should technically work. Basically what we're doing is we have a current at the head. We start a counter at zero. We're gonna loop through the list. If our current nodes data is equal to the value that we passed in, then we're going to increment this counter. And essentially, instead of doing C out down here, I want to return count. <clears throat> And then I guess down here, or just in our main, real quick, instead of removing this data, let's do something a little more simple. And just very lazily do this and change this to a seven. And then. <clears throat> Instead of displaying the list, I'll do C out a dot instance of let's do two. Now do I have I don't know if I have um, the ability to do this, but we're gonna find out real quick. Oh, yep, okay, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Where is it at? I don't like typing it. Oh. Actually, where did I include that at? I include that in this? Oh, wow, okay. Uh, usually I include that in um, the header file, but I guess I didn't this time. Interesting. Oops. So now we'll. Well, we should be good. Give me access to uh, C out and Indel. And now we have three. Because if we look at it, we have one, two, three instances of two. And if I simply change this to um, hmm, let's try five. Change it to five, that should just get one. Yep, and if I change it to something that's not in it, like nine, then I should get that zero that I set it to at the very beginning. Just zero right there. And then if I want to do something a little more maybe elaborate and <clears throat> do int x equals a dot instance of one. Oops. Int y equals a dot instance of say let's do two and then we want to see out x is y oops sorry no Oop, yep. Not using the namespace, so I need to actually make sure I do that. And now I should be good. And now I get five because the instance of one is two, and the instance of two is three. And I set them to integers because that is what I defined this to be. It returns an integer. So now I added a new function, and it can actually count the instance of elements in my linked list. If I want to do one as like a boolean to determine if an element exists in it, I can do that too with a very similar approach. So there's a lot of versatility you can do, a lot of abstract functionality you can add to it, and it's really, really, honestly, pretty cool. I like Linguist. I think they're pretty good. Uh, they're not exactly the most exciting data structure, honestly. They're pretty basic, but I think it's a really, really good starting point for everybody to learn and then you move on to data structures that have more specified application like stacks and queues, binary search trees and stuff like that. But in understanding that there are structures that we can create uh, through object-oriented programming for C++, 
I think they do a really, really good job at setting the foundation. So hopefully this explains how they work, hopefully it explains the actual code that's written and that you have access to. Um, and hopefully everything made pretty decent sense. So for now, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you later. Bye.